warm welcome to a new episode of Melt. I'm Ritwika Gupta. On the show this week, we continue to understand the possibilities that the new year holds for advertising, communication and marketing agencies. Today, Anand Rangaswamy, editor of Melt, will be chatting with Shashi Sinha, principal CEO of IPG Media Brands India, about what 2022 has in store for the media agency business. Let's get ready to Melt with Shashi Sinha. Hello, Shashi. Hi, Anand. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Shashi. So it's that time of year where we talk to CEOs of uh, media agencies and creative agencies to try and get a sense of what is going to happen in the year to come. But for the first time, I'm not going to ask you about any numbers because all the projections made will be changed 15 times before the end of the year. So the sense I want is what is 2022 going to be for your business, the media business, uh, media agency business, not the media business, good, bad or ugly? I think we're good, Anand. Let me explain why I say this, uh, you know. So while last year, 2021 uh, ended up reasonably well, uh, but it ended up reasonably well only in a context, you know, because April, May, June was uh, terrible. So if you look at a calendar year, Jan, December, uh, it evened out. And my broad sense for the industry, without getting into the numbers, you said numbers can be here or there, that I don't think we have come back very strong compared to 2019. Whether it be flat or there'll be a marginal growth, those all details. But it's it's not really, you know, so in a manner of speaking, the industry has paused for two years. You know, right. so even if you say 4%, 5% growth is not a big deal. So for an industry growing a double digit, uh, I think 2022 definitely the hope is that it will grow. So really speaking, the pause will be, the pause button will be removed and we will grow for the first time in three years. 2022 will be the first year of growth after 2019. So I think therefore I'm excited and looking forward to, you know, how most companies work, they plan investments, cycle on the projections. So manner of speaking, 2021, there would have been no investments. Whatever people may say, it all be extraction of costs, improving costs and all that. So, and sorry for taking a little bit more, because, you know, what has happened is in the last two years that all of us have learned to manage our costs very well. I think a lot of flap has gone, you know, in terms of travel, in terms of a lot of other stuff, real estate. So I think we, our efficiencies have come in. Now to make the investments in the right area uh, and uh, to fuel growth. So I'm pretty excited. I mean, I personally feel this is a good time to whatever direction people want to take. To so it looks very good. There is a bit of a blip because of uh, the wave three, but thankfully this is not uh, very acute. Right. So now uh, let's get a little granular. Again, I don't want numbers from you. I want a sense of uh, which of the uh, mediums uh, you're excited by you know, break it up into sort of uh, television, uh, digital, print, outdoor, yeah. radio. You know, it's, I'll, I'll be seen as uncool or not fashionable if I don't talk about digital. But mm. having said that, I still am a big believer of uh, TV as a medium. You know, I know, I understand the cord cutters and the top 1 million, 2 million and this whole OVT craze which has happened, which is taking away. But I still think for a large FMCG companies, you know, bulk of the bulk of the meat is in, uh, in the heart of India, which is television. And I'm sure television will get that together, linking up, you know, uh, OTT to there. I mean, probably the big players other than Netflix and Amazon who don't take advertising are all big TV players. So I think TV will remain. I'll come to digital in a minute. Uh, you know, the reason why I'm parking it aside. Obviously, digital in absolute numbers will see growth. But, uh, you know, so I think uh, print also is under leveraged. And uh, I, for one, am holding a torch for print. So print, the problem and the challenges of print is that the print owners have to decide uh, that, you know, uh, they have to come from a growth mindset. Today, uh, if they come from a mindset of, no, let's consolidate, let's say what we have, then you will find a situation where, you know, they will not grow. They will be, the print is taken a rapid beating compared to 2019. Whatever the numbers, like you said, numbers don't matter, but there is no doubt they've taken a beating. But I think they have to win space, mind space back in the client's mind. And there are many ways they can do it, you know. Categories with a strong one like auto where we play very big. We have, so I understand print to that extent. I think, you know, if they start merging their whole data, firstly, they have to agree to allow industry data to come back, you know. So be it whether it's ABC, whether it's IRS, whatever it is, they have to, I mean, face the reality and say, these are the new numbers, this is the new normal, let's come back with what it is. That's the first big mindset. And the second is linking uh, their numbers to their, all of them have digital products. All of them are making noises that they get away from Google, you know, and they will start building their own platforms. 
and they start giving performance to that because all is done for a lot of auto launch today nothing to be print is the impact you get from print then you get up to your digital asset so in a way this holistic selling whether it's tv plus ott or whether it is uh, you know uh, print plus their digital and it's the top of the funnel so the awareness will come from your lead product whether it's tv or your tv channel or your print paper and the the bottom of the funnel you're giving a holistic solution to a client so if they get adapted this that's that's the future you know shashi you and i have discussed this many times over the last 10 years yeah. the problem with measurement in print you know we have uh, had unpleasant talks also when you were at yeah, ias and I, I so guess, on yes. so where does this go because even you you said abc that is only a uh, you know top yeah, yeah. level quant measure yeah 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 no i so, think so i let me clarify I'm, my apologies i should have clarified so mm-hmm. there are two parts to this what i am trying to communicate one part is that if print back in small town india that clients don't believe so you need some metric whether abc is a good quality or bad quality i'm not debating that or whether the irs is good quality bad quality there is some metric to say at least it is back in uh our regional mango you know it's back to 90% they all keep telling me it's 90% but there's no proof of concept so good or bad irs is a benchmark if they turn around and say listen this is a bad so that's the hygiene part but the valuation come from what i'm saying that proof of performance is you know once you start just now most advertisers don't believe that print is back to 90% in say up or mp or uh, maharashtra or wherever you know i'm purposely giving bombay delhi out uh, so that is the first part of establishing credibility then i fully agree with you the next part is the layering which we are doing which is in terms of say listen i have a product and i have jagran or i have askar or whatever and i'm saying this is this is what the product does to me and this is what the the digital part of it because there's a fair degree of uh, so to speak leadership on the digital product so link the two and show proof of performance there you know shashi many many years ago uh, i can't remember whether the ipg or lodstar used to invest itself significantly in understanding print better Yeah. Do you think, in the absence of an industry measure, uh, people like you will be forced to go there again? I had actually, if I may say so to you, and you're a friend, so I can say it in the, your forum. No, I think I had actually worked on a proposal with Nielsen last year. You know, towards the latter part of last year, and it's not very expensive. Uh, doing a doing a online study, I had also spoken to a couple of my colleagues uh, in the industry, saying, "Why don't you do it?" but then uh, you know it is like raising a red flag in front of the bull so i thought i'll evangelize this first uh, with a couple of big print uh, uh, publishers the whole objective is not to you know have a big believe the ecosystem so the thing is not to antagonize uh, them so but i think uh, we are happy to invest i mean we have done in the past we should do a reading noting study as you correctly called out i generally believe some pilots i've spoken to some uh, publishers for clients like amazon why do you do the latter part which is the linking tv with digital lensing the performance there but till you do the first part where you start bringing faith back saying 90% or 80% of circulation is back or edition is back then the second part makes sense so both have to work in tandem but i i am open absolutely open okay now uh, let me provoke you you know measurement in india is controlled by uh, most people like you who are over 68 i would say yes do you think you know we need fresh blood for example when uh mruc started and so on you had a lot of very young people controlling yeah. that yeah do you think there's something needs to happen in the media agencies to I get young agree. people no i think people have to carry the with people have to see that it's a, it's a it's a it's a current firstly uh, in spite of the fact that at this point in time i am uh, the chairman of mruc uh, and you know in some way i'm on the board of bark uh, but i couldn't agree with you more uh, now the current moment which i don't know how to crack it there is that there is uh, because in, in india the wrong things are uh, recognized so our ability to manage constituencies our ability to you know uh, the positions we hold that's what you know in a way the perception or the or the thinking is that there is uh, gravitas comes from the title or your age or whatever put together so that's what uh, is true but absolutely i mean you know people are not open to change so for example today there enough technology being developed and discussed in terms of measurement wherever you want which uh, which will give a sort of dramatic shift and people don't want their positions uh, you know change especially in the print side just like me on the on the board there are representatives of publishers who also similar profile so i couldn't agree with you more is how to find the how to carry the ecosystem with us the solution is not there be not young people who will be there the tech people who will be available right but but so, i agree with what is 
Hey, another, another provocation to you, uh, Shashi. You know, over the last five years, if we have seen media innovations, we've only seen them in the digital area. We haven't seen any great TV or print innovations. Uh, whose responsibility is it? Is it your responsibility, meaning the media agencies? Is it uh, the broadcaster, publisher responsibility? Whose responsibility is it? Is it to innovate in print? You know, we saw, say, 1995 to 2005, extraordinary innovation in print. We also saw overlapping lovely innovations in TV. Why don't we see that all over again? Why is it just stagnant? So it's a combination of two or three things. The first thing to answer your question is accountability and responsibility of both the publishers and the agency. We are partners. You know, some of the best work happened, as you know, more than anyone else. You know, you know, you were responsible for the first Khan's Gold, which uh, India won in media innovation. Anand, you were part of that uh, project. So it is a joint responsibility which uh, happened. You know, so uh, so I think as both people work together, it works in tandem. I think there is an issue of scale and flexibility. So a lot of innovation happens, which is going to have scale. Television has uh, restrictions. I must say, television still does a lot more than print. Print, uh, print is really relatively low. Digital, a lot of stuff which you're seeing don't have scale. It's, it's uh, there, but you're right, because they're open, it's a new medium. They, they, they're young, hungry minds, they're looking at things differently. So which is why whatever happens, it may have scale, may not have scale, but the, definitely, uh, the quality of innovation or the quantum of innovation is far, far more digital, undoubtedly. Now, I'm going to ask you another question which relates to your status as one of the leaders in the business. How do you get young people excited in getting into the media agency business? You know, your names are not known. We never read about you. Uh, you know, when you go to campus recruitment, you never hear of a media agency there except perhaps my car. But what, will, what does, who's again, going to take charge and say, let's make me, the media agency business sexy, which it used to be, Shashi, right. in the late, late uh, uh, in the so, early you know, 90s what, and so on. In our own small way, and right. because industry associations talk about it, they finally they falter. But in our own small way, scale may not be much. I don't know if you know, Anand, we run uh, what we call the lead program. We've been running it when I was part of SCB, I was running it as Star One. Now we run it as lead, uh, the same program, name changed, but uh, thing. And uh, there are three, four things. And I'm very proud of what we do. We pick up about uh, 14, 15 people every year and without a break, uh, you know. So whether it's uh, pandemic, no pandemic, uh, we took them on the joint date, but we, we honored all the contracts. So what happens is those campuses, those 10, 12, 15 campuses we go to, it's not very large, but 14, 15 campuses we go to. We, we have built up a rapport. People know, batches know, we give them projects. So there's a whole program which our teams run. And we are very well regarded and known on this program, uh, those campuses. You must bear in mind that for historical, for minute variety of reasons, our composition don't match as an advertising industry composition don't match. Uh, but you know, you'll be surprised. We still get a lot of good talent. A lot of talent who want to be in advertising, uh, who want to be in media, don't necessarily, they all want better, more money, but they're willing to sacrifice. There are a few people we know and uh, which is why. So it is, it's not a large scale effort. I mean, 10, 15 campuses going every year on year for the last 20 years is not a big deal. But uh, we announced well, we're contributing. This has been discussed in many forums. I mean, part of Ad Club, I remember we did something with Micah, uh, of course, we're doing a lot of evangelizing, but they don't have steam. It's a sporadic effort, you know, with Bhaskar, we had discussed in the publication, let's go to Small Town MP and do some stuff. So, so you're absolutely right. I mean, till we, till we uh, evangelize this full scale, uh, so as organizations we can do. If, if I had an opportunity in my alter life, you know, uh, thing. I'd love to love to take this on. Uh, I think there's so much talent in small town India. Uh, you know. uh, but you know, there are. Uh, let me give you a, a side. Sorry for digressing. We have in the pandemic, uh, from a global standpoint, opened up uh, back office in India for analytics for multiple companies. You'll be surprised. In two years, we have recruited under media brands 350, 400 people. The unit called Kineso. That's a large number to recruit 350, 400 people. They're basically catering to US and Europe. And my first, uh, this was before the pandemic started, there were about 70, 80 people before the pandemic and now it's ramped up to 350, 200 people. And I said to them, you know, why don't you, why are you housing it here? House it in Jaipur, it's housed where I sit. Uh, so why don't you house it in Jaipur or uh, Lucknow or, you know, Chandigarh somewhere. That's where the talent is. And they shot me down, no, 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 we need supervision, this, that. And the pandemic, those kids are working from all over. And now the thinking is they'll never come from wherever they will come from. They stay, you know. And we were tracking closely because of the COVID and, you know, we were tracking the people in Narita, people in Bhagalpur, very happy. So it's a small attempt. I'm 350 people, 200 people. 
but uh, it's great if those people they never come back to bombay or they they come once to show their face uh, but it's a great thing right so uh, to close i want to views on this you know you brought up right at the beginning to the answer to my first question that you know uh, in the last two years all of you have learned how to deal with costs uh, travel and so on and so forth now let's understand pandemic induced habit change in the workplace you know i know uh, you load star ipg all of you have been very very concerned about the workplace 10 years ago not even today but tell me pandemic induced work from home and habit change uh, what do you think will pan out in 2022 at the end of 2022 what would we see will we see physical offices how much will be hybrid how much will be working from bagalpur and so on yeah so if you want my there are two parts to it there is a formal i want think yeah yeah so i'm saying in a way it's very good what has happened because globally they have taken a stance uh, that we will work hybrid you know hybrid will be the way forward if you ask my personal opinion my personal opinion so i am a very touchy feel kind of a person but touchy feel doesn't mean that you have to come to office every day while it's fashionable to say that uh, you know the work pressure has gone up because calls go on late at night but i'm sure in the new way of working to not very to people a lot of people will prefer so if you give them flexibility i mean the what the pandemic has taught us that flexibility no one will get uh killed because of flexibility so i think conceptually flexibility whichever way flexibility works for you you know you may want to give it hybrid as a name or whatever way and i'm a big believer that's the way people feel empowered they do whatever they want you have to trust people if someone has someone said to me you know you're lying uh, remote working how do you know they're not in two jobs so well that we are still not a tcs with 30000 uh, for 50000 employees we still put together 2000 employees or whatever so you have to trust people but if you ask me personally flexibility not only whether it's online offline whether you're working from office or working from home but flexibility in many other ways you know right so listen you're doing a project i could be bothered what you do whether you're clocking in 8 hours or 4 hours or 1 hour whatever you do the project in that will make a big difference right the challenge for everyone in the objections to work from home have been these uh, two issues that you brought up one is uh, the suspicion that somebody's got two jobs or three jobs or four jobs or whatever and the second is how do you measure the output whether persons working not working and so on so do you think a metric will be developed for you to measure output differently I, compared to you know your appraisal of the past i personally feel yes or no i personally feel that uh, you know we are still not large organizations that yes performance of bill mechanisms and metrics are there diamond as a global company that uh, but it's very easy to judge performance you know finally if i may i'm old school what uh, someone said to me brendan and one of the ceos of hcb many many years back 15 years back said to us and this is the only measure is i sit in front of you and i say no you call up your plant you know what are the level is and if you take your call and put the on speaker and see what the quality of the interaction is that's to finally we in the service industry you know so if i pick up the phone on mr sudhi was it's unfair to so it's a wrong example to give but if you know no, you can drop one or two more names <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I can. You are absolutely right. I mean, in my case, very embarrassing to say in my case, but say if I talk to the side, I take my call, not take my call, or mm-hmm. one of my colleagues, or you know, I mean, the equivalent. So there are enough ways of checking it out. What your client relationship is, you know, you all know which is a good client, which is a difficult client. In that context, what your equation is, you know, finally, because finally, if you are adding value to a client, if you are doing something, he will respect you. If not, he will stick. That's the super major. Whether you are doing it over eight hours or half an hour or two hours, that doesn't bother me. So finally, uh, I'm going to give you a chance to talk to your own colleagues in your own company. So a message to the 30 year 30 year olds in your own company. So I would say that guys, this is the time you see to get away from this whole thing of eight hours, ten hours. Focus on quality. Focus on quality. And focus on what gives you happiness. So quality for your clients and happiness for you is the mantra. That's what. If that happens, everything else will fall into place. And you know, I'm not trying to simplify things. I don't complicate things. Fantastic. That's what it is. Absolutely lovely, Shashi. Lovely talking to you, and hope to see you uh, touchy feely in a few days. Yeah, catch Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. And that was Shashi Sinha explaining what media agencies can expect in 2022. He is now presenting the Mail Cheat Sheet. For larger FMCG companies, TV will remain a big player. The quality of innovation is superior in digital media. The pandemic has made companies realize a greater need for flexibility in the workplace. On that note, let's move to this week's creative picks. 
Apple has debuted three new shots on iPhone ads highlighting the camera capabilities of the iPhone 13 Pro, with each of them focusing on a specific feature in a humorously dramatic manner. In the first ad, two detectives are sitting in a car discussing the cinematic mode which lets you shift focus between subjects in a shot. The foreground detective mentions that the focus is on him since he's the main character. And that's when the other guy asks, but what if I'm the killer? We then see the focus effortlessly shifting to him instead. In a similar manner, the other two ads also highlight the advanced low light and optical zoom features. The ads are funny, clever and look really good. Can I ask you a question? Am I out of focus? You're fine. Yeah, but I mean, look at me, I'm all, I'm all blurry. Well, you're supporting cast. What? The camera focuses on the most important character, which is me. Well, what if my character had a big reveal? Like what? Like maybe I'm the killer. Are you? Yeah. No. Could have been. Could have been the killer. Hello? Are you? Help me. Who's that? Help me. Who is that? Who's there? Help me. But uh, I'm scared that the picture quality will suffer in such low light. up on my petrified face. Yeah, it looks really good. Help me. Can I just turn on the light? No. Get down the stairs. Pavel? Pavel? Ты в порядке? Да. А что? Из-за этого медленного нервирующего зума кажется, что твой персонаж погружается в безумие. Нет, нет. Все в порядке. Ты уверен? With that, it's a wrap on this episode of Melt. You can follow us on social media. Our handle is ready to melt. And stay updated with all that's happening in the world of advertising and marketing with our daily Melt update on our website, readytomelt.com. I shall see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>